stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. UFC Bantamweight, Trevin, five star Jones. He's coming off a second round TKO victory at UFC Vegas 7, man, two weeks ago when we spoke. You didn't even have a contract, you didn't have a fight. Now you're sitting with 50 G's. What's going on? Yes, sir, man. It was um, it, it was crazy, man. Me and you've been talking about this. Me and you've been talking about this. Oh so, man, finally here, bro. It's crazy. We, we, man. I know I could do it. I knew I was here, bro. I knew it, dude. I stayed true, bro. I knew it. Everybody yeah. counted me out, but at the end of the day, I did know it, man. Yeah, you took the you took the chance, man. That's what I think. No risk, no reward, right? And and you did that. Oh uh, yeah, man. I took the I took the risk, and man, without no risk, there's no reward, man. Um, it was all or nothing that day. That's all I had, man. Two days, and that's all they gave me, and it was put on the pedal, man. Put on the pedal. Now let's talk about those two days. 48 hours, very hectic. You, you talked about it in the post-fight where you had to go through all the paperwork, the medicals, and then you were cutting away at the same time. Just describe that in a little bit more detail than you did earlier. Man, this is like beyond. Like, I put it this way. I say like, you have to have been a fighter that have losses and been through adversity to get through this. I think not even an undefeated 14-0, 10-0 fighter could have went through what I went through because he would have felt he was in an advantage of a place. So he would have felt his shot was coming more perfectly and more correctly. What I went through was two days, 16 pounds, pretty much a day and a half, and two days to weigh in, a day and a half to weigh in, and I got seven doctor's appointments all around Las Vegas, scheduled at different times. I'm taking naps for 15, six minutes, three minutes at doctor's appointments. They're freaking out why I'm so skinny, so tired. I'm cutting weight. Man, it was everything that I learned in my career. The losses that I went through, everything had to be there to get through this situation for two days, for sure. I would have never been as strong as a fighter as I am without the ups and downs that I went through to get through what I went through in these two days, for sure. It was tough. Yeah, man, and I think uh, a lot of people should know that, man. It's, it's, it wasn't an easy road for you to get to this it spot. It wasn't. It you was know very that? hard, man, very tough, man. A lot of, um, I want to say doubters, but, you know, I, I had to I had to keep speaking, and I had to keep speaking, and I had to keep moving forward, man. Many times I could have easily gave up, but I didn't. I stayed true because I, I, I train all UFC fighters. I train all guys, and, you know, I, I felt where I was at, and, I'm happy everything worked out, man. We're here talking now. It's crazy. crazy. I'm happy. I'm happy for you, man. Uh, was that the toughest weight cut of your career? Man, I've had a few weight cuts like that. Um, it was the toughest weight cut of my career. No, it wasn't the toughest weight cut of my career. That's what's crazy. That's that's why my friends were like, man, you've been here before. You felt this before. This ain't nothing. Um, it was maybe a tough weight cut knowing that I had a so touch of a was tough of an opponent. And he had a full cap, and I knew he was going to bring it. Yeah, it was kind of tough on me. But at the end of the day, nah, man, like, it's the most weight I ever cut in a day and a half. For sure, 16 pounds. I've never came close to cutting that much in one day. Not even close. So, yes, it was the limit. Um, But as far as a tough weight cut, like, my legs were very flat. I know for sure I had no legs under me from cutting so much weight. All the traveling, the biggest hot sun. Man, it was 116 traveling in a rental car with no tent, going to cardiogram, EKGs, CAT scans, all located in different parts of Las Vegas, like 30-minute drive this way, wait another hour, your next appointment's this way. So, man, it was the hardest weight cut while cutting weight and taking care of appointments because I never did that in my life, never. By the time I get to the weight cutting part, I'm done, I'm free. And that's all I'm doing was waiting cut. So it was a very step up for me, man. I grew two times, three times as a fighter from this two, three days. A lot of people are calling this one of the greatest comebacks in UFC history, man. What do you feel about that when they when they say this? Man, so just my take on like calling it a great comeback. It's like they're saying he was so much better than you. You had no chance to beat this guy. But 
my team and me, we never thought like any of the spectators, we never thought like any of the fans. Because other guys I feel are afraid to fight other good guys. Like I'm really not afraid to fight other good guys or guys that I feel on my level or guys that I feel are gonna be good. Like how else am I gonna get the shine? You know, I cannot get the shine for beating up on regular average guys, man. Um it was the best for me actually, man. He was so good, so talented and everything and Man, I went out there and got it done on two days' notice. I know what a full camp. I would have had so much strategy and stuff planned for him because I'm a strategized fighter. At the end of the day, I'm a very smart fighter. And um, I don't like getting dominated. I usually win first rounds, win second rounds. Like, he came out there, he beat me the first round. Man, I was I was mad about that in the corner going into the second round. So people don't know what I've been through. I was able to actually notice that I was mad that I lost and that I, I was getting whacked up on the cage. I was mad. I was upset. And I knew that going into the second round. So, you know, but what I didn't have, I didn't have my regular style. I didn't have the wrestling. I didn't have to put the pace and clinch with him and just be able to grind with him because the weight cut was so tough. I wanted to, I actually, we planned to just look for that shot. We're going to get the shot. We saw he kicked a lot. We knew the right hook was going to get through, man. He kicked so much. We knew we fought Kwan Ho Kwok. Kwan Ho Kwok was a very good kicker. Same style. And I learned from that fight. I said, okay, I let Quan get away with too much. Quan got away with a lot of no kicks, very nice kicks. But we were able to to capitalize on this guy when he came out with all those kicks, man. So it was more like um, we went into a, a quick, detailed game plan. I only watched him pretty much on fight morning. I didn't know who was fighting the whole time. I didn't have time for that. The weight cut and everything was tough. But, yeah, man, it was, it was, a, it was a hell of an experience, man. I tell you right now, like, most fighters couldn't couldn't get through that no doubt man no doubt now going through all of that you know the weight cut and and the 48 hours of of chaos and then you go in there first round you know you you you, you go through so much adversity second round you get that finished like how much have you leveled up in your mental game do you think because going through all of this so i was in the back and i told myself trev they're considered this guy this good they're considering this guy this good. You can have a fight after this guy and another fight after this guy, and it might still not be as tough as this guy and the situation. So they put me in a great place mentally, emotionally. They put me in a very confident state right now. Like, I'm I'm always very confident, but now I'm, like, I'm feeling good. Like, Trev Jones without no nerves is dangerous. Like, he's going to be dangerous out there, so... Man, if they come out and they give me a a regular opponent again, man, I don't know what might happen to that guy. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. I knew my opponents was tough, but we always knew I was tough. Um, I've only been finished one time, and that was also a short notice fight that I took when I was finished, but I always stuck it out. My teammates always believed in me, like, Trev, man, they're, you're tough. You've been through all this already. They stuck with me, and, man, we just knew that. If I just stay focused, got the weight off, that the fight is not going to be what people are saying. Like, we knew that I can take damage. We, we train for this. This is what training's about. And I've been talking about it, and I've been talking about it, and I've been asking for the fight. But asking for a fight is very different from a full camp. You know, like, I was, I was semi-ready. There's no way I was all the way ready. I was training. I was ready to take whatever, but I wasn't camp ready. I wasn't weight cut ready. I wasn't eating on point every second ready, you know what I mean? So I just had the fire to fight, and the fire got me through that. But now the fire with skills is going to be, they're going to see the real Trev Jones next time. They're going to like him. 50 Gs, does that change? So It does change so much for you, right? It does, man. I, you know, I help all my friends. I help all my family. I help all myself. And, you know, we, 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 we feed off this, you know. Um, just before this fight, I was willing to take a fight. For pretty much no money because I know after I was gonna beat this guy, then they had to call me then because I was looking to put a stamp on it and to get that fight canceled and get a UFC contract, make 50 G's, take home the two checks. Of course, man, it's great. You know, everyone around me, everyone's in, in a good position right now. I can help everyone build. I can help the people around build so they can help build me. So it's perfect, man. I, I think I've been working hard for this. I stayed true to the game, and 
a lot of people say you deserve this moment, you deserve this moment. Sometimes I'll be like, ah, oh, stops. But this time I really think I do, man. I think I really deserve this moment. Yeah, man, you deserve it, man. You've been through some adversity and you know i've been with you the whole time man I've, yeah, I've seen so, it go yes. through, so yeah it's man. all good man i appreciate you uh showing me love by giving me the interviews and all that that's why when you um, called me for that day one interview i wanted to get you on first man i wanted to get you that interview <laughs> first i wanted to be let out and and heard from 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 your uh website first but you know guam called me they yeah. called me the regular news so you know i, I took up on that because that's where i'm from but i wanted to definitely get you on the interviews first, man, for taking care of me and keep getting get, getting me to speak to people through your website. No doubt, man. You got to give love to Guam, man. That's your spot. So, you know, sure. it, it is what it is. For now, sure. what, what's the plan, man? You're going to stay in Vegas? You're going to go back to Guam? So I go back home next month. But right now, a lot of uh, decision making and, and thinking has to be done, man. Um, Right now, I go back home next month on um, my original ticket schedule and... I'm going to settle in. I'm going to get everything in. Of course, I'm still going to train there. But right now, I have to figure a lot out. I have to figure out if I'm going to make the move, train back and forth. But I know for sure I'll still be training out here 100% for a full UFC camp, no matter what. Whether I'm starting on Guam and coming out, I'll be out here training. Like um, I know my manager and them are trying to send me to American Top Team and some other things they're setting up. So we're looking at a better Trev Jones to come, You know, more complete, more more uh resources around me now like you said the money is definitely going to help resources and build the game so yeah man i'm looking to get it on man i'm excited i'm excited for the future you feel like maybe i should go train at other spots like american top team and oh yeah oh yeah oh, man there's some high level guys mm -hmm. there's some high level guys man you we're in the big league now man i can't I can't just say, oh, Trev, you got enough to beat these guys. I know I have the heart. I know I have the skills. I know I have the potential. But I still got to put in the work. I got to always put in that work. So I'm looking to go take my lickings. I'm looking to go get beat up everywhere. Because when I get in there, I only want to win, man. I'm only there to win. And and that's what's crazy because I told my corner man, I said, man, the only thing killing about this fight, this guy, he's good. He's good. But, guys, I don't only want to go in there and say, oh, you got in there and you fought in the UFC and you got out. On my debut, I said, guys, I need to beat this guy on two days' notice. I need to win. I told him, I, I said, I need to win. If I don't win, it's not going to be the same. I said, I need to win. So when I got in there and he, and, he, and he landed a good push kick and he did what he did, I just stayed focused, stayed calm. Um, one of my friends had fought in... Um, in Saipan one time, and he got hit with a body shot, and I saw him sit on the cage, and as the ref went in to stop it, he hopped off the cage real quick. So it's just experience, man. I watch fights and stuff, too. I saw him do that. I did the same thing. I was I was caught up. I realized I'm okay. I came back out there, and the fight continued. I took the beating, covered the body, let him get some shots to the head, made sure I watch out for the knee down the pipe. I saw he was trying to hit the knee, and just hung in there. Um, I got a takedown, and then the second round, I knew I wasn't breathing hard. I was I was fresh going into the second, and I cut all that weight. So I'm like, okay, now we put the pressure in my corner. Say, put the pressure, Trev. Now I wrestle him. He's tired. So you know, I, I draw him in, man. They don't know, but I draw him in. I draw him in. I let him work his energy down. We knew that. We knew we didn't have the energy to match him. Already, his fighting style was very explosive and quick. And then we came off a cut like that. We knew we didn't have the energy to match him straight up. We knew we had to get the clock on him, and we got it. You do you plan on going to 135 or is it like 145, 135? It doesn't matter right now. Um, the resources are good right now. With good resources and a good time, 35 will still be no problem. I'll make 35. Mm -hmm. I made 49 in one day. I made a uh, 39 in one day, 16 pounds. That's about what I cut to 35 mm -hmm. with the week's notice, with two weeks notice. So it's about the same cut. Usually when I'm cutting to 35. On Monday of the fight, I'm like 150 maybe, and then if I'm anything above 150 is hard. Anything below 150 is easy. So I cut usually like 15 pounds in three, four days. Weighing on Thursday, fight on Friday. This one I did 15, 16 pounds in a day and a half. So I'm confident I can go to 35 with no problem. Um, 45, it was to get in. I was willing to do 45 to get in if they needed me for that. 
they needed me for that. But, you know, we can do 30. I told them I'll do 35 for the UFC all day. Well, going through everything that you went through and, and performing the, the the way that you did, I'm pretty sure the matchmakers, they love you right now. Who 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 do you want to fight? I'm pretty sure when you were sitting on the outside looking in, you, you saw 135ers and thought like, man, that's a good matchup. I want to go in there and fight this guy. Who do you think, you, you know, you might have a choice right now? Yeah, I did, man. Actually, I... <laughs> This guy that I just fought was pretty good, man. He yeah. was damn good. So the guys that I used to look at that I want to fight weren't as good as him. I know they weren't as good as him, so I'm feeling like, damn, Trev, who do you need to fight now? I feel like I need to fight a superstar now because <laughs> he has so much everything. Uh, man, the things I was hearing, uh, you find a good guy. You know, I got friends. I'm in the game, and, and I know people that know him too. And they, he was a well-respected opponent coming from all the miles I heard, so... Man, who do I fight next? That's up to the UFC, but I would expect it to be a pretty good name after beating that guy. I don't think they want to give me anyone too easy, man. So we'll see how it goes. I'll be willing to take whatever fights, man. I'll step up for the cash, bro. I'll step up. I'll step up. You don't see any, like, veterans, you know, some big names. They they might not be ranked, but they're big names because that's what you probably want in your next fight, right? You, 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 took, mm-hmm. out, you, you took out a prospect. A major prospect now it's like you gotta get your name out there a little bit more right so do you see anybody so what it was is i had this plan like if you're a badass guy and the ufc wanted you they and they wanted you you know you can negotiate now you can you can make your contract you can set the tone you cannot go in on that starter pay you know what i'm saying but since i have my losses or whatever they're like you kind of i gotta take whatever they give me you know but after that win versus that guy, I'm like, TJ's worth a little something now. TJ's worth a little something now. So, um, yeah, um, I would like to renegotiate that contract. That's what I want to do. I want to renegotiate that contract. And then if I renegotiate that contract and you want me to fight tougher guys since my money's better, no problem. But if I'm going to end up staying on the same contract, then, of course, I would like to build myself against guys because no matter what, it's going to come my way. I want to make it to the second contract, the third contract, the fourth contract, the UFC title, the UFC Hall of Fame. There's a new set of goals now, man. That's the thing. I'm going to keep setting goals on these guys, man. Um, These guys don't know that out there I'm so happy because I didn't show half of my real game, man. I didn't implement my real style at all. I'm very happy about that. They don't. So when they see me in my next uh, fight, I'm expecting to get another bonus, man. I'm expecting to be surprising. So I'm excited, man. I'm going I'm to put them, put some ground game and some work on these guys, man. I, I think they got holes, and I think I can really exploit them there as um, well camp and as hard going as that guy went i got that takedown real real easy i noticed that i was like wow that i had a hard time getting takedowns in smaller leads man like hard time like guys will fight me i got that takedown real easy so i was like okay maybe these guys that are so good got a lot more openings you know so we'll see man there's gonna be a lot of tough matchups to come of course a lot of tough guys i respect a lot of ufc fighters whether i say what i see or not like i i i I respect these guys. I know how hard the game is. I know how hard they also work to get there. And, you know, it's um just my dream versus their dreams when we get in there. But on, on the other hand, like, I don't think I'll really be the kind of person to have a very uh, hard problem with anyone in the UFC. But, you know, we're going to fight, and I'm going to come to beat you, bro. That's the only thing that's going to happen when you fight me. You could probably become a, a, a bonus machine. You're talking about bonuses. Yeah, man. I think I got the submission skills to get bonuses in the UFC. I really do. I think I can get bonuses in the UFC. I watch all the bonuses. I watch the submissions that people get bonus with, man. I have all these tools in my arsenal. And I got the punching power, too, when I wear them down. So, you know, I think um, they really have to watch out for me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dark horse in that division now. I really do. I believe so. I see a lot of strikers, but I fought a lot of strikers already, man. I'm, I'm a problem for these guys. Well, Trevin, go back home, relax, train, get that next fight lined up, and uh, we'll be speaking soon, man. Appreciate the time. Appreciate you, man. You always take care of me. Thank you for everything, man. You 100, bro. Hey, guys. Sasha Platnikoff here, letting you know to tune in to SCMP Post Fight for all your weekly martial arts news.